Hey guys, it's CS Joseph with csjoseph.life. Tonight's video uh, comes from a user request. It is the uh, mentor versus the sage, also known as the ENFJ versus the INFJ. Uh, I started doing these comparison videos because someone else made a video of me on uh, YouTube and they were claiming I was an ENTJ, so I did an ENTP versus ENTJ video to try to disprove and uh, rebut their argument. However, in this process of doing that, one of our subscribers uh, had asked me to do a video on ENFJ versus INFJ, so this video is for you. Uh, just so you guys know, um, comparison videos like this, I've just decided to do these based on user request. Uh, I'm not really going to plan these all the way out per se. So if you want me to do videos on them, I will definitely do them, and eventually I'll get around to them, but they're not going to be as high a priority based on the core content that I have, unless, of course, you are asking me. I usually take uh, user requests very seriously from subscribers, so just let me know, and I will do my best to get the video out for you as soon as possible. It's important that... Uh, I keep this audience uh, well loved because I love all of you guys very much and uh, because you spend so much time listening to someone like me be a talking head with a weird, uh, you know, well, with one of these actually, the famous Target whiteboard, if you know what I mean. So let's dive in. Welcome to the ENFJ versus INFJ. So why is it important to do comparison videos like this? Well. Probably because, uh, well, it's probably because, uh, people wake up in the morning and they're like, oh, I'm so ENFJ. And when they get home, they're like, oh, I'm so INFJ right now. And I'm like, no, that's retarded. Like, it, it's seriously dumb. That's not even true. That's not how the MBTI works. Sorry, all of you people on the INTJ forums who keep thinking that your, your letters flip. That's not even real. That's not even accurate. And if you think that, uh, no, that's not true. Because we have this thing called the four sides of the mind, right? So, for example, at any time during the day, you be in your ego, or your shadow, or your superego, or even your subconscious, and that has nothing to do with your letters changing. It just means, oh, I feel more introverted right now. Well, that means you could actually, if you were an ENFJ, then that means you're an INFP, or it means you're an e ISTP. I mean, which one, right? It depends, it depends on all the different situations. So that's not how type actually works. So there is no, I'm ENFJ and then I'm gonna go introvert and be INFJ the next day. Like that's a lie and don't believe that. That That is like not even remotely relevant or real and has nothing to do with any of it. Don't believe me? Read John Beebe, B-E-E-B-E, -E -E -E. or is it John Beeb? I have no clue, but that guy, it's one of my uh, sources, uh, along with Linda Behrens and Plato. Uh, he could define that a little bit easier. So anyway, let's do a deep dive. So uh, ENFJs are in charge. Um, they're all about uh, being direct, initiating control. But the INFJ is about being a direct, responding movement. They're known as the C at three types. They, they are so focused on finishing things, but they have a really hard time starting anything. And most INFJs would agree with me on that because they're like, but I don't have a degree, or I don't have this certification, or, you know, and because I don't have these things, I don't deserve to go for this job, you know? And it's like, okay, wow, guys, way to be like really emo about that. But, you know, if you just apply yourselves, regardless of your credentials, and just rely on the fact that you have TI child, which basically usually makes INFJs right anyway, because of how how they have this insane grasp on logic with that TI child, it's like it's like this pure, refined, uncorrupted form of truth that INFJs carry. That means they could basically think their way through almost any situation which means I don't care what credentials they have, they'll be super useful in that role. And INFJs, if you're watching this video, please understand that. Like, you need to give yourselves more credit. Don't let FI critic just kind of eat your faces alive, you know, and be like, well, I feel useless and worthless, and, you know, no, stop doing that. Actually, you're, like, the most useful. So realize that that's true and live your life that way, please, for the rest of us. Please, please do that, you know. 
And of course, you know, ENFJs have it a little bit harder with their TI. It's like, oh, I'm really insecure about what I think, and I'm afraid that I might be wrong, so I have to ask everyone else how they feel about it, whereas the INFJ doesn't have to ask anyone about how, they, how other people feel about their ideas because they already know what their ideas are. And it's more like they look at people with their ideas, and it's like, well, why don't you feel good about my ideas? You must be a moron. You know, it, it, it's, it's a very different approach. You know, it's not the same as ENFJs. You know what I mean? So ENFJs are very in charge, whereas, you know, INFJs are introverted. ENFJs gain mental energy by being around other people. INFJs lose energy from being around other people. And they need they gain energy through solitude, whereas solitude drains the energy of the ENFJ. Uh, like, like that's remotely useful. You know what I mean? Well, it is. It's because it's who they are. It's uh, we have to respect these components of these types. There's not much we can do about that. So, um, in any case, so egos, the ENFJ, um, they are very all about how other people feel, and they feel guilt so much because of Effie Hero. But INFJs, very similar. They also can be like totally guilty of things because they have Effie Parent. But Effie Parent is not as strong as Effie Hero. So technically, ENFJs end up feeling way more than INFJs in a, in a big way, and like in a serious big way. Um, and that can be a problem for them. You know, ENFJs are really taking charge. They're, they're, they're focused so much on giving everyone a really good experience at all times. They always want to make everyone feel comfortable. The INFJ is afraid. They're afraid of giving people experiences. They're afraid if they're expert in sensing inferior because they're afraid they're going to do it wrong. INFJs walk around having this performance anxiety, whereas the I ENFJ anxiety is just in their thinking. It's like, I'm anxious about what I believe is true. Whereas the INFJ is like, I'm anxious about my performance. You know, it, it's different, guys. It's not the same. You know, NFJs are very different people. We need to stop thinking that they're similar. They're not really that similar at all. It's just the letters make them look that similar, and they're like, oh, okay, I'm a layman, so because the letters are similar, I'm going to assume they're that similar. No, they're not. Yeah, they're both idealists and very people-focused, but their priorities are completely different. So ENFJs prioritize caring, whereas INFJs prioritize what they want. You know, whereas ENFJs are a little bit more responsible for what they want, but INFJs are very responsible when it comes to, you know, grasping social matters and social issues and social justice. You know, in fact, INFJs enforce fairness way more than ENFJs. Why? Well, ENFJs willing to let some things, some unfair things happen as long as everyone around them has having a good experience, but not INFJs. They don't care that much about the experience other people are having when it comes to fairness. They're going to enforce fairness and social justice way more than the ENFJ ever would because to them, any one person not giving a good experience is not worth it to them. So they're, they're going to go with it even further, right? And ENFJ is not necessarily going to do that. So... Um, so we talked about extroverted sensing, and one's insecure, and one's very childlike about it. We talked about TI, you know, and uh, so uh, if if the ENFJ gets over its fear, and then it can become this, the ISTP subconscious, and uh, like my ENFJ father, he has this thing, his hobby, where he like works on scooters in his garage all the time. Uh, that's because his ISTP uh, subconscious is coming out. And, uh, you know, eventually, like, I had another friend, his name was Chris, he's an ENFJ, he mastered golf, he's one of the best golfers I know, in fact, he's probably the best skilled golfer I've actually physically met and shaken hands with, he's absolutely amazing, and if he continues to go in the direction he goes, he could definitely be a pro, uh, he's probably getting really close in his level of mastery of the game where he could be a pro, and it's because of his ISTP subconscious. INFJs have their ESTP subconscious, and I INFJs are trying to become the alpha of their group, basically. You know, uh, kind of have like their own little cult following or their own little disciple friends following them around and whatnot. It's because of their ESTP, they're trying to be the alpha. They want to be as alpha as possible. Alpha amongst their peers. You know, and that's like when sometimes uh, they get jobs that are going nowhere. They just and they see everyone above them or around them, it's just like, well, it just, it breaks them up inside because they want to be the ones in charge. They want to be the ones who are leading the pack. They want to be the ones driving and executing social change, you know, whereas the ENFJ would just want to tinker in their shop and have fun all day long playing with things, even if it's Legos, for example, because it engages their craftsmen. But that ESTP wants to be able to persuade. The ESTP wants people to value their thinking, value their wisdom, right? So the INFJ 
has a lot of wisdom to share, but is trying to convince everyone else around them to value it. And that's what the ESTP does. They take charge. They find their followers that will listen to their message, loyal followers. They have to be very loyal. And they end up creating their own like little wolf pack or whatever. And then because of that wolf pack, they're able to, you know, um, they kind of draw their self-worth from it because their FE parent, their SE inferior combined together, giving these people a good experience, raising them up. Um, you know, the INFJ's number one export in life is to create better people to improve them. A lot of people would say the ENFJ is that way. Not necessarily. The ENFJ is just trying to teach people to be better. You know, it's like... Uh, Teach, uh, give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. Teach a man how to fish and he'll eat for the rest of his life. ENFJs take that very seriously and they really want to be that benevolent teacher in that regards to just, you know, teach people and show them away. And then once they're done with them, they're going to move on. INFJs, it's not that way. Yeah, they'll teach that man how to fish, but then they'll also expect that man or want that man to follow that INFJ's teaching for indefinitely. They want to keep that person. They want to keep that person loyal. They want, you know, they, they go around collecting people like trading cards. They, it, they just want to create this new family, this new following, this new movement, right? That's what the INFJ is all about. ENFJ doesn't care that much about the movement. They will get involved, sure. They will be a part of the movement. Um, they'll even do things to execute the movement. They'll even take charge of the movement every now and then. But once they're done, they're done and they're moving on. They're going to go tinker and do their own thing. They don't always have to be there up front and center because they just want to teach. And once they see that person is improved, that one little problem that they see in that person, that's fine. They're going to move on to the next one. Why? Because they're extroverted. They, you know, it's, it's kind of like a one and done situation, whereas the INFJ, it's more like eternal in a lot of capacities, provided that those people with the INFJ are actually loyal to them. Because the INFJ, both types value loyalty, but the INFJ values it more. Actually, the INFJ needs it more because it's an inferior function, whereas the ENFJ doesn't need it as much. Sure, the SE child is stronger and has twice the amount of awareness as SE inferior, but they can command attention very easily and get the attention that they want, whereas the INFJ doesn't have that that much. So it, that's why it's like a bigger need for an INFJ in that regards compared to the ENFJ, you know. But the trade-off is the INFJ is slightly more intelligent than the ENFJ, believe it or not. It's because the ENTJ is afraid of what they think, whereas the INTJ or the INFJ always knows what they think. And it's this uncorrupted logic. You know, it's, it's very pure. It can get corrupted, though, but that's when the shadow ENFP comes in. Because if the INFJ can be corrupted, it can become um, depraved because there's an ENFP shadow in their mind. And that depravity could actually corrupt TI child eventually, and all their thinking is based on how they can, you know, be more selfish for themselves. And I'm not talking responsibly selfish because I preach that often. I'm talking like really selfish at the expense of other human beings. And FE parent for some reason, and SE inferior for some reason, just is not aware when it gets to that point where they're really starting to take advantage of other human beings within their wolf pack. But eventually, someone will criticize them, they'll feel bad about it, and then they'll course correct, and then the INFJ will no longer be so corrupt because people are calling into question their moral behavior. And as long as the INFJ has someone to call into question their moral behavior or their super high moral standard that just alienates everyone, they'll course correct because they'll realize that they don't want to give people a bad experience anymore and they want to be more ethical and focused on justice with their FE and that's and that's very important um, to them to do that. ENFJs, the, having that following, it's just not that much. They don't want to teach, like, see the INFJ, they want to teach many people, you know, and have that following, but the ENFJ wants to teach one, right? It, it's really interesting how their priorities, similar but different, you know, it's more... One's more extroverted focus, one's more introverted focus, yet one's an extrovert, yet one's more introverted, and how they do things. It's, it's, it's so similar, but so different at the same time. It's amazing how our minds work in this way. Um, so, I mean, look at how structured it is. Look at all these functions and how they sit, you know, and, it, and if, you know, if the theory of evolution was absolutely 100% true, then we'd find ourselves in a situation where we'd have more chaotic-based uh, cognition, yet we don't, right? So then that's more of an argument for intelligent design, you know what I mean? And that's just as a result of the science of depth psychology. 
it kind of makes you think, you know, as far as how deep these functions can go when it comes to these types. Yeah, you, it, it continues to unlock many, many, many more nuances about human life that we're not even aware of. So anyway, let's move on. So we talked about the ENFP shadow a little bit and how it can potentially corrupt and become depraved with the INFJ. When it's not doing that and it's kind of been a little bit more mature, the ENFJ shadow can actually help the INFJ uh, advocate for the proper ideas in people and that further helps support their ESTP subconscious to build that wolf pack, to build that following, to build that movement. The INFP with the ENFJ really is more focused on its own internal dream world and bringing that ideal dream world to existence and that ends up going to the ego and that really helps support the ISTP. That's why the ISTP is constantly tinkering and building things and crafting things and developing its craft because the ENFJ, when it tries to view the ideal world or what the ENFJ believes is the ideal world, it wants to create it and use its craftsmen to craft that ideal world, to manipulate the physical environment, to bring it forth, to make it true, right? It's not so much about ideas or movement or following or persuading people. It's about building something that has meaning. It's, it's how, it's how uh, like an ENFJ will dream it with their dreamer shadow. And then they'll, they'll think about it with their ENFJ ego. And then they'll implement it and build it with their ISTP subconscious for the purpose of having a lasting legacy. Because that's their legacy. Whereas the legacy of the INFJ is the movement, basically. I mean, just look at Gandhi. That's his legacy. Everyone knows Gandhi, right? Whereas an ENFJ, like a giant structure or um, a temple or a pyramid or even a bridge would be the legacy of the ENFJ. I imagine that the, you know, ancient Egyptians, the the pyramids, an, an ENFJ probably designed one and then and had it built. And that is that ENFJ's legacy was that pyramid, for example because they really take that seriously. D deliver building a structure that everyone can remember them by, because that's how SE Child works. SE Child wants people to remember them. Sure, so does SE Inferior, but SE Child really wants people to remember them and to never forget about them and never forget about that amazing experience that SE Child delivered, right? And that's why they go so far in building those things. So um, they're... they're their super egos are very similar. Uh, the ESTJ versus the ISTJ, both of them, but uh, both of them can elect themselves judge, jury, and executioner, and uh, take people out in that regard. But the ENFJ does it more from the point of control, you know. Whereas the INFJ does it from the point of movement. Remember, the INFJ has to have progress. Although, um, to, in order to uh, to feel good about themselves, to feel like they're going anywhere, otherwise they're going to get super depressed. Whereas the ENFJ, they get super depressed if everything gets out of control for them. and They need things under control. That's why they like to have a more solid plan. Even though both types, as NFJs, expect others to plan for them. And if they feel good about that plan, or if they think that plan is good, excuse me, if they think that plan is good, then they will, you know, they'll implement it and they'll follow that plan. But... When it comes down to it, you know, the ESTJ superego is really there to be a taskmaster and just force people to do tasks, like with a whip, you know, and, and control as much as they can because to keep things under control so the ENFJ can be, like, comfortable in that regard. That's if all of a sudden, you know, you don't listen to the ENFJ, you don't give them their day in court, and when that happens, uh, all of a sudden their TE demon activates to force people to listen to them. That's kind of how their ESTJ superego works. The INFJ is a lot more different. The INFJ is like, you know, I expect, it's coming from SE Inferior. SE Inferior is expecting loyalty of the people that it, that the INFJ improves around them. And if that loyalty is not there, the ISTJ superego will activate. And it will just basically attempt to permanently maim or punish anyone that's no longer loyal to the INFJ uh, and cut them off completely. To the guillotine you go, basically, all because of that broken disloyalty. Whereas the ENFJ just wants to have its day in court. It just wants to be able to share what its thoughts are. It's not about, you know, loyalty. Although loyalty is super important to the ENFJ, they still have the point of view that they can kind of find loyalty anywhere with the INFJ their point of view is is that the kind of loyalty that they're looking for the super idealistic loyalty is very rare right there's a rarity to the loyalty the kind of loyalty that the infj is trying to look for that die hard loyalty 
um, because INFJ is like, well, I'm willing to self, I'm willing to sacrifice myself for you. I'm willing to take a bullet for you, so you better be willing to take a bullet for me. And it's kind of a covert contract, except INFJs after a while, as they mature, it's not a covert contract, and they'll actually straight up tell that to their followers or those close to them that that's what their expectation is. Um, if it ever becomes a question, but then again, like types like INFPs or INTPs, ENFPs, um, ENTPs, those types usually already get that because of their SI child and SI inferior. They they want to be diehard loyal to the cause anyway, and that's how they behave. And that's why INFJs really like NPs for that reason. So, yeah, I think just that just about covers the differences between the two. So remember, the ENFJ is very in charge. Um, they're focused on being, you know, direct initiative and control. They're very control, whereas the INFJ is more movement. Uh, the INFJ is very quick with making decisions. The ENFJ takes a little bit longer because they have to spend more time thinking about it, whereas the INFJ basically kind of knows what they think on it, and they just can make the decision right away. Um, the ENFJ is about, you know, trying to bring its dreams into reality and teach other people. And, and leave a lasting legacy that people can remember. Whereas the INFJ is trying to craft that, that uh, create that movement or wolf pack of followers so that their message, their message uh, is what, uh, and their way of thinking is what actually survives the test of time and definitely similar to Gandhi um, or other famous INFJs. Uh, Jesus Christ, for example, was an INFJ. And uh, we're still talking about him 2,000 years later, huh? So there's, there's, there's a reason for that, you know, uh, <clears throat> and you know you can look at amazing structures that ENFJs help bring together. You can look at ideas and ways of thinking that uh, INFJs have brought together. But that's just who these people are, right? So you can see they're completely different types. They're not really as similar as we think. Yeah, kind of similar. They're NFJs, but they're very different. Have different goals, different priorities, different needs, um, different boundaries, right? and uh, different standards even. So based on that, you know, you can see how different they are when you compare the two to each other. So guys, don't be going around saying, well, you know, I'm an INFJ, but I feel very extroverted right now, so I'm an ENFJ. No, that means you're being an ESTP or an ENFP, depending on the situation, right? You're either in your, your shadow or you're in your subconscious. It, it all depends, so anyway. I think that covers these two types. If you found this video to be educational or helpful, please leave a like or subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions regarding this comparison, leave it in the comments, comment section. Also in the comment section, if you guys have any requests about some type comparisons that you would like me to do, uh, let me know and I'll put that on my uh, subscriber request board of the different videos that have been requested. I try to uh, mix these videos in with like the main series that I'm working on uh, just to keep the content fresh and keep it going uh, and also to make sure that uh, subscribers uh, feel appreciated um, and that to know that I'm listening to you guys because I am like every day especially like on Twitter and not just YouTube so anyway with that uh, probably gonna be doing another video here shortly so I'll see you guys tonight